Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar. I'm delighted you could join us. My name is Tim Rycroft. I'm the Chief Executive here at AHDB. Uh, providing independent evidence analysis and insight is absolutely one of the cornerstones of the work that AHDB does to support our levy payers, as is our commitment to international market development, working collaboratively with exporters, wider industry, and of course, the government to ensure that our produce takes centre stage on the global table. Now, as most of you, I'm sure, know, the Comprehensive and Progressive Trans-Pacific Partnership, CPTPP, is a free trade agreement between 11 countries, Australia, Brunei, Canada, Chile, Japan, Malaysia, Mexico, New Zealand, Brunei, so I said Brunei, Peru, Singapore and Vietnam. And in March, the government announced an outline agreement had been reached for the UK to join CPTPP, which could present long-term opportunities for the UK exports of red meat and dairy. Now on Monday, May the 15th, AHDB will launch its trade modeling work on the UK joining CPTPP, and we'll be highlighting population growth, economic development, and the expansion of middle-class consumers as key drivers for long-term opportunities for both red meat and dairy. The work is compiled in conjunction with Harper Adams University, and it examines the strategic implications for UK agriculture of joining CPTPP, and is an excellent example, I think, of the independent evidence analysis and insight I talked about earlier, uh, designed to help exporters identify where the opportunities are, how to maximize them, and in essence, putting that independent evidence into collaborative action. Today's presentation is aimed at providing an advanced deep dive of our analysis ahead of publication on Monday. The session will be chaired by Sarah Baker, our Head of Economics, and presented by Jess Corsair, AHDB's Senior Analyst, who has led on this work. They'll be happy to take questions following the presentation. So I'll now hand over to Sarah and Jess. I'm sure you'll find today's presentation of enormous interest. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tim. And before, before we get into the main presentation, I just want to take you through a few uh, pieces of housekeeping. So next slide, please, Maya. All attendees will be muted uh, and the webinar is going to be recorded and that will be made available to you after the event via email. Um, also via email, there'll be a survey. I'll be, I really appreciate your time in filling in that survey to give us a bit of feedback to help us uh, improve our webinars in the future. So if you can take the time to fill that in, I'll be grateful. Next slide, please. Um, as Tim said, questions are very welcome. We'd like you to ask a question. So if you look sort of on the right hand side of your screen, you'll see a little orange arrow. Click on the orange arrow, um, then a white box that says questions and then type your question. I'll be able to see it and chairing the, uh, the the proceedings, I'll be able to read that to Jess and Jess will give you your answer in due course. Okay, next slide please, Maya. And at that point, I'm going to hand over to Jess. Thank you very much. Thank you both for that introduction. Um, I'm Jess, I'm a senior analyst and um, I've been leading on this project with Harper Adams um, to um, model um, the impact of the UK's accession to CPTPP. So if we could head forward a slide, please. Um, today I'm going to kind of give an introduction to the work and, and, and what we've been doing, um, an overview of CPTPP and the trade and production of the, of the meat products in those countries, and then I'll move on to discussing the results of our modelling work. But firstly, um, kind of answering why we do this work. And I think so since we've left the EU, there's been um, quite a lot of attention on the new trade deals that the government has been negotiating. And with that has come a lot of media scrutiny, scrutiny about the free trade agreements in general, um, mainly about kind of concerns about potential increases in imported goods and those goods being more competitive than our domestic product. And there's also queries about standards of production, especially when it comes to things like animal welfare. So I think as, 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 as Tim discussed, as an independent evidence-based organisation, we, we, we're really there to provide the evidence and analysis to kind of cut through this noise, look at the facts, and then communicate this to levy payers and the wider industry. We have um, done similar work in this space, um, looking at um, doing some modelling work with, with New Zealand and Australia, 
which we released um, over the last couple of years. So if we move forward a slide, please. Um, just very quickly, going to give an overview of CPTPP. Um, so as I mentioned, it's a free trade agreement between 11 countries. It um, actually evolved from something called the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which was a similar proposal between those 11 countries, but with the USA. However, the USA withdrew from the partnership um, before it was ratified. So those remaining countries sort of evolved it into CPTPP. Um, it is quite a considerable, um, a sizable trading block. Um, it represents 13% of global GDP and accounts for 15% of global trade. And really considering in that there are some big um, agricultural, agricultural trading countries within there, like with New Zealand and Australia and Canada as well. And I think the key thing with CPTPP is that there is um, a lot of room for growth. Um, the population is currently estimated to be 500 million, but that is predicted to increase over the coming decades. And not just increase in kind of in, in the number of people, but also this project projected increase in the affluence of that as well. So that will result in, 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 in more demand for high value products. And another key area of, of, of kind of opportunity there is the fact that there are other countries that have submitted applications to join CPTPP, which is definitely kind of where some of the some of the long term opportunities lie for the UK in terms of in, in getting improved access and reducing those technical barriers to trade. I think you can see the list of those countries on the screen and I think the biggest of those would be would definitely be China, but then there's also Taiwan, um, Ecuador, Costa Rica and Uruguay in there as well. So really upon us joining CPTPP, it gives us a foot in, foot in the door to, to, to those Asian markets and the opportunity to develop those relationships going forward. Um, the UK is um, the first non-founding member to join. And um, you know, there's, there's plenty of benefits, um, um, mainly with improved market access. Um, within CPTPP, there's the pledge to eliminate, um, I think it's about 95% of tariffs. Um, and alongside that, making trade easier with reducing trade barriers as well. Um, you can see at the bottom of the screen there, we, um, as, as Tim mentioned earlier, we have come to an agreement with CPTPP. And within that, um, the negotiations um, secure some inward tariff rate, rate quotas. So um, only a specific amount of pork and beef will be allowed to enter the country, um, tariff free, um, therefore protecting our domestic markets. And these um, TRQs will um, increase over 10 years, eventually re reaching 13,000 tonnes for beef and 55,000 tonnes for pork. Um, if we head forward a slide, please. Um, next, I'm going to be um, looking at kind of the current trade and production of beef, lamb and pork across CPTPP countries. Um, a key point here, I've with, with, within this sort of narrative here, I have not considered um, New Zealand and Australia. Um, firstly, recognising that they're huge agricultural exporters and producers. Um, but we have already um, modelled the countries and published in-depth analysis on their trade and production and looking at the impact of them joining CPTPP. And as a result, that the deals that they secured with the UK are not going to change upon us joining CPTPP. So I'm just sort of focusing on those additional nine countries. Um, so firstly, starting off with beef, um, the, the, the two major producers of beef within CPTPP are Canada and Mexico <clears throat> and subsequently um, they're also the top exporters. Um, we're looking at it, both countries are um, producing over a million tons of beef um, each year and um, Canada, uh, Canada and Mexico are both exporting a considerable amount of that mainly to the USA um, as you can imagine, it's the country next door, so that, that's the, the, the main market that they're exporting to, but also they have got the long-standing free trade agreement there as well. Um, but in addition to the USA, they're also exporting to um, quite a number of different Asian countries, predominantly um, Japan and China. And then the biggest importers of beef within CPTPP 
would be um, Vietnam, Chile and Malaysia. Um, and there is really a huge variety of where those imports come from um, across, um, across different Asian countries as well as from, from, from the USA as well. Um, <clears throat> and I think throughout this presentation, um, I'm going to kind of bring in and draw on some of that um, export opportunity work that we did earlier on in the year. So that was looking at kind of key markets for, 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 for export opportunities in the future. Um, and that um, work found that the best opportunities for beef were Singapore and Japan, and that there were good opportunities for Vietnam, Canada and Chile. And you'll see throughout um, all three of the products that we're talking about this morning, Singapore comes up as, as best. Um, Singapore has no domestic red meat production. Um, so, 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 so very reliant on um, imports to satisfy demand. And there is certainly an opportunity in those markets for kind of the higher, higher quality premium cuts of meat as well. So if we head forward a slide, um, I'll now talk about lamb. So both within, within CPT, CPTPP, both consumption and production of lamb is pretty low. And um, you can see on the slide, um, pretty low numbers. Um, the top producers are Mexico and Peru. But put in, putting those numbers into context, um, the UK is producing about 300,000 tonnes of, of lamb a year. So in, in, in context with that, you can see that those numbers are relatively small. Um, and, and, and with that, there, aren't, there isn't a huge amount of exports from, the, um, from, from, from those countries, um, just a small amount from Chile and Canada that mainly heads to China. And then um, top imports are Malaysia, Canada, and Japan, um, who do import a modest amount of lamb. Um, and as you can imagine, that, 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 that those imports are mainly from Australia and New Zealand. Um, and if we head forward onto pork, um, within CPTPP, there are some uh, big pork producers and consumers. Canada is one of the biggest pork producers in the world, um, and pork is one of their biggest agricultural sectors. So they're producing over 2 million tonnes of pork each year. But there are um, also over a million tonnes produced by Mexico and Japan. So a similar, similar story as with beef, um, Canada and Mexico um, predominantly export in pork to the USA. Um, but as well some some heading to to, to other asian countries um, i think you can you can see on this slide um mexico and canada are kind of the top producers top exporters and top importers um, and um yeah so even though these countries are producing a huge amount of pork they're also still there's still there's still a huge demand for it as well um mexico and japan are actually the second and third biggest importers of pork across the world with number one being china so um, yeah, you can see even though they're producing over a million tons, they're still um, importing nearly a million tons as well. Um, and then if we head forward a slide, now focusing in a bit more on the modeling work we've done and um, looking, look at, looking at the numbers. So I'm just gonna give a quick background on the model. It's been developed by Harper Adams University and it's there to give us um, an idea of the quantitative effects of trade deals. So in terms of kind of trade impacts and there's effects on prices. Um, and what makes this model a bit different is that it doesn't just look at the two countries that are involved within a trade deal. It's also considering that wider trade network that those countries op operate in which makes it a bit more realistic compared to other types of models that could be used for these sort of impact assessments, as it recognizes that, that, that there's, there's a share of market power there and, and, and different relationships and different interactions with, with, with different markets. So the model is based on a trade network um, consisting of, 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 of what we call nodes, um, which will be countries or groups of countries, which allows us to, to, to within this um, model CPTPP as a group. And then it looks at the two countries that are having, um, that are directly involved within the trade deal, but whilst considering those other key trading partners and how the deal might affect those as well. So um, 
just some key key points to consider when we're interpreting these results. Um, <clears throat> It's important to remember with this that it's it's not a prediction of how things will change, rather it's showing the effect of the UK's accession to CPTPP if all other factors were to remain the same. So this means that the, the, the results do not include assumptions around factors that might change in the future. So things that might change could be GDP growth, inflation or labour availability which which could impact the data that we've used. So what the model is assuming is that the environment of the years that we've the, the recent years for which the data we've used will not sort of worsen or improve significantly. Um, other th key things to consider is that the, the the model doesn't account for carcass balance, so it's treating beef as beef. Um, and it cannot look at things on the basis of different cuts. So whereas we know that there's different demands for different cuts around the world, but what the model is doing is just treat, treating it all as the same. Um, yeah, so if we head forward a slide, we'll just have a look at the network that we've used for this analysis. So um, you can see here, we've got the five nodes. Um, for, for, for this, we've also got the UK, and um, we've also used the EU and the USA because we recognise that they're huge um, players in the global market. The, the EU is a, is, a, is a big partner for the UK and the US has a lot of trade with, with quite a few of those CPTPP countries as well. And you can see that we've grouped the New Zealand and Australia separately for this. Um, firstly, we wanted to separate them out because, because they're such um, big um, big imports and exports of, 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 of the lamb and beef, but also because, because we have already modelled the, 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 the impact of these free trade agreements, we wanted to see the initial, the initial impact and, um, and, and, and what was agreed upon within those FTAs with New Zealand and Australia isn't going to change upon the UK's accession to CPTPP. So yeah, with 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 this in mind, we've sort of we've we've grouped the other nine countries separately. <clears throat> so throughout, as I'm talking through this analysis, um, when I talk about the CT, CPTPP node, I'm talking about those those other nine countries. Um, if we could head forward a slide, please. Firstly, um, I'm just having a look at the results for beef. So um, as you can see from from the slide, the model suggests that UK beef exports. Um, will increase by 60% to CPTPP, so that's about 1,400 tonnes. And to put this into context, we're currently exporting 2,400 tonnes to CPTPP countries, and globally we're exporting about 120,000. So just putting that in context there with those two numbers. So this um, definitely a positive foot in the door to those markets. Um, and for us um, to um, send this this amount of beef to CPTPP, there will be slight reductions in exports of um, beef towards the EU and the US. But um, <clears throat> the model is also suggesting that there'll be an increase of beef production as well. So there'll be an increase of beef production from, from, from the UK. Um, and in terms of imports, from CPTPP, the model is predicting that there'll be um, a rise of about 50%, um, and um, which is about 606, 660 tonnes. Um, and to put this into wider context, we're, we're currently importing about 200,000 tonnes of beef a year. So that slight increase in, in, in imports is, isn't a huge amount compared to what we're already importing. And I think here is a, is, a, is a good point to draw on the fact that I mentioned at the beginning that we have negotiated those um, inward beef TRQs. So that's starting at 2,600 tonnes in, in the first year, increasing to 13,000 by year 10. So with um, like the current level of imports, um, in addition to this 660 tonnes, it will still be, un it's still going to be predicted to be under 2,600 tonnes um, in that first year. 
Um, I did mention earlier that we do look at um, the effects on the domestic prices, domestic market and prices as well. Um, but as you can see from 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 this, there is there's in terms of, in terms of amounts of, of change in trade, there's not there's not huge significant amounts. And then we see that um, with this, the changes to the domestic market and prices are still are, are relatively small to less than one percent. <clears throat> And then moving on to lamb, please, on the next slide. So um, with lamb, as I discussed earlier, um, consumption of lamb within CPTPP countries is, is quite low and there's not a huge demand for lamb products there. So you can see that the impacts are even smaller than that for beef. Um, the model's showing that UK exports will increase by about 119 tonnes. That's a 20% increase. We're currently exporting about 450 tons of CPTPP. So just putting that into a bit of context there. And um, as you can see, there is there is a minimal increase in 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 UK imports from CPTPP at 75 tons, um, which 37% increase. Um, but as you can see, that's a really small amount. Um, <clears throat> and um, with these minimal changes, as I've said with beef, there's um, sort of very small effects on the domestic markets and also kind of domestic production and prices that are paid to producers. <clears throat> so moving on to pork, please, on the next slide. Um, yeah, so finally looking at pork, um, in our country analysis, we found that there was big, big pork producers in CPTPP. Um, and the model is showing that um, UK exports to CPTPP are expected to increase by about 818 tonnes or 23%, um, which is a, a modest increase. We're um, currently exporting about 3,500 tonnes per year to CPTPP. Um, and in terms of our imports from CPTPP, um, this is expected to increased by 402 tonnes. Um, so this is still a relatively small amount. And as I discussed earlier, we have that inward TRQ. That is starting at 10,000 tonnes. So you can see that there's quite a big difference there. Um, and still, still very much below that TRQ. Um, and then as with, as with beef, and, beef and lamb, um, the, these are very, relatively small amount changes, so there's minimal impact um, on the domestic marketplace and production or prices. If we could move forward a slide, please. Um, so kind of coming to some conclusions there, um, if we could just move forward a slide. Um, as you can see from the analysis, there's um, some slight increases in exports for meat products heading towards the CPTPP countries. And as we sort of, as put in our initial analysis, the short-term impacts are relatively small, although positive, and, um, but there aren't any dramatic changes to trade in the short term. But what we do expect to see are, are, are more benefits and modest increases to exports in the medium to long term, um, because, Going back to what I discussed at the beginning, um, there is um, potential for population growth in these countries and also um, affluence is meant to increase as well. So there's definitely more opportunities to be sending agricultural products um, and higher quality and higher quality products as well. Um, and, and, and also um, there's, we've also got the opportunity if, if other countries join CPTPP as well. So, especially um, if China were to join, those opportunities will increase even further. But for now, it is um, definitely a foot in the door into these markets, and there's definitely long-term strategic opportunities um, for the UK to start um, not trading with these countries and de developing relationships to, um, to um, take advantage of these long-term benefits. If we go on to the, into the next slide, um, we are publishing this work on um, Monday, so Monday the 15th, um, and as we've done the last couple of pieces of analysis, we are publishing this um, as web-based articles, 
rather than a full glossy report. We'll have a CPTPP hub page on our trade and policy web page. Um, and within this, we'll have um, articles covering um, um, analysis of, of, of the different countries and the trade and production with them, as well as looking at an overview of, of, of CPTPP as a whole, and then having those in-depth articles of the model and results as well. And with this, um, we'll, we will be um, continuing to publish articles over the next coming weeks with the dairy modeling results also on the way and coming soon. So thank you very much. Are there any questions? Thank you, Jess. A really comprehensive presentation there. Uh, Jess has taken us through the country opportunities where, where we think the key countries, key opportunities to get uh, UK produce on, on those plates in overseas markets lie. Uh, the modelling results gone through the technicalities of the modelling and, and what the model tells us and those key conclusions that although uh, the opportunities are there, the opportunities are relatively small at this, uh, at, at this initial stage, the fact that we are the first country to accede to CPTPP and the fact that other countries are queuing up and the fact that this is an area of great population growth means that it's a really key strategic uh, foothold in that part of the, the globe. The questions are already coming in, Jess. So uh, the first one out of the blocks, and this is anonymous, sorry, I can't see who's asked this, but the question is, what is the time frame uh, of the model's predictions? Yeah, so great question. Um, so the, the, the numbers the model's predicting, they're um, predicting that's that, that's for the first year that, that, that the, um, the agreement comes into place. So that's predicting from the from when we sign and when we're officially part of CPTPP, that's looking at the impact on the following. OK, thank you so much. Uh, the second question, and apologies if I can't uh, see, but this I'm going to read this out. Would it be possible to expand a little bit on how the model assesses CPP, C, apologies, CPTPP demand for UK product? Is current demand there but restricted by trade barriers? Can we compete on price against others in those markets or are we relying upon increased demand consumption? Thank you. Okay. Question. Pardon? Sorry. That was quite a long question. Do you want to take it in two parts? So, so first yeah, of all, how does okay. assess the demand? How? Sorry, sorry, you just broke up there. How does the model uh, assess the demand for the UK product? Um. So the the the, the model is based on um on. on our our data so um looking at current um imports and exports and the production in these countries as well as well as um, um tariffs and prices um and 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 considers all of those within the, within the modeling thank you and the second part of that was can we compete on price against others in the market or are we relying upon increased demand consumption happy to put that um, up if you want you can go. Yeah. So, sorry, we're looking at increasing. It, can, can we um, can compete, compete on price? like for like? Yeah. Um, I think I think wh where our opportunities lie is definitely kind of in those. Um, we, we, we've got the we've got the higher quality cuts of beef as well, or, or not just beef, or three products, but um, definitely with, within those higher quality products. Um, um, and that, that's a, a key opportunity for us in some of these marketplaces, especially places such as Singapore, um, that, that, that that's, that's um, is, is looking for those higher quality products. And that's where UK ticks the box, doesn't it, with the, with the quality. Um, another question com coming in, it says, um, do we know from the model which countries within CPTPP will be exporting to, or does that come from your market intelligence? Great question. So from the model, um, the model can't determine which country within that node, that CPTPP node, um, um, we'll be importing or exporting to and from. So we, we can't we can't we can't say for definite within that, but we've we we have got these in these this analysis on those individual countries that we can draw upon um, to help us sort of uh, draw draw some, some some conclusions there 
that's really good. Thank you, Jess. Um, another question. Um, does the model consider non-tariff measures such as uh, sanitary and phytosanitary standards? For instance, the fact that Canada's beef, uh, a lot of the beef produced in Canada is uh, hormone treated. Yeah, great question. Um, that's not something the model can consider. So within 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 the model, we're not looking at trade barriers such such as the hormone treated beef. Um, we, we can draw on these um, during our kind of commentary and our analysis to sort of um, look at when, when we're looking at what the model is is doing. But um, yeah, that the the model can't can't take those things into consideration. Okay. Uh, another question has been asked: When will the dairy results be available? Um, we're looking at getting the dairy results out in, um, over the next few weeks. Um, I'll definitely communicate that once once we've got them once we've got them ready and on the website. Okay. Where? Uh, sorry, these are coming thick and fast now, so bear with me. Where import and export numbers and percentages are not available on the model? Does this suggest the numbers are negligible or that imports export to these nodes will not take place? Um, that's if, if it's not on the um, if it's not if it's not on the on the figure um, there's kind of little um, little change in, in in trade except for those with 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 New Zealand and Australia but we can draw on that from our New Zealand and Australia analysis um, that that looks more in more detail at um, the, the impacts and trade for those okay uh, thanks for the presentation. Uh, you've focused on the export side, but do you see any risks to domestic producers from cheaper, lower animal welfare products coming onto the UK market? Um, not initially. I think um, so, so. As we've seen for the model, the the the, the, the increase in imports are, are relatively low. A lot of these countries have already got established um established um markets there um and and unless there was some 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 big like disruption to trading we don't kind of expect those trading relationships to change dramatically um i think um we also drew on this with our new zealand and australia analysis um with, with the worry of, 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 of lamb from new zealand but a lot of a, a lot of those um kind of where they're already sending say lamb to those those, those markets are well established so so we, we don't see too much of a, of a threat there and of course the risk of um products produced to a lower standard we have that guarantee from government don't we that they're not going to allow any products we can set our standards we don't have to accept, accept products uh produced to a to a lower standard and that's the case with um with the red line in the sand with the hormone treated beef for instance so um we have reassurance that that will not be happening okay um i think i'm just going to run through the questions one more time but i think that is all the questions for now yes yes i think it is unless anybody's got any other questions oh one more if New Zealand and Australia are not included in the CPTPP mode, where do the sheep meat exports from CPTPP to UK come from? So we we can't we can't determine from the model where those where those are coming from. Um, that's an increase of seventy five tons. So looking at the as shown on the earlier slides, looking at who was import who was exporting sorry lamb. The only two countries that were really exporting were Canada and Chile, and they were only small amounts from there. So we, we can't say for definite where they'll come from, um, but but we can draw on that. Analysis. Suspect it was from that. that yeah. was. Thank you so much, and thank you everybody for your attendance today and for your questions. I'm going to pass back to Tim now to close. Thank you, Sarah, and thank you, Jeff. That was fantastic. Really uh, high quality analysis and insight generated there from some fascinating evidence. Uh, thanks, of course, to Harper Adams for their collaboration on this work. Um, uh, thank you for your participation today. I hope that you have got as much from it as I have. Uh, we will uh, publish, as we say, on Monday, uh, and I'm sure that if you have more questions, then the team will be happy to uh, address them. 
thanks for your time today. Um, we look forward to seeing you again soon.